Hey everyone, thanks for checking out our Sunday wrap-up, a weekly recap of the Sunday teaching to allow you the opportunity to gain more insight into what we work through together as a body. We hope you find it beneficial, encouraging, and a tool to allow you to help answer the question, how do we live this out? Hey, good morning. Hey, today's topic is uh, one that is a very big and complicated issue, um, or at least we tend to make it because it very much um, goes into secular world and how we act, how we the light of the world on earth. What does that look like for Christians? And so today we spoke about wisdom concerning social justice. And I know there's a lot of um, secular uh, things that we taught in college, just all in every sphere of life, it seems like this is kind of a, a thing that can come up. So um, Patch is going to uh, make a few points for us, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about kind of a call to action and how you can be involved in, in that. So one of the things that we tried to wrap our heads around was the kind of the intimacy of social justice when it comes to biblical social justice. And what we found in a few key points that Chris brought up is that Jesus is obviously at the center of that. And of course, that sounds like the Sunday school answer. Jesus is at the center of everything. He's at the center. Jesus. And he is. He is. But more practically speaking, three of the things that we talked about was that how we treat people can reflect the character of God and the teachings of Jesus. How we treat people can reflect how Jesus has treated us. And when we fight for the rights and protection of the defenseless, we act like Jesus. All three of those points are pretty important. That last one was one that connected with me the most because it reminded me of the three areas that Jesus specifically talked to us about in Scripture, and that's the widows, the orphans, and the poor. And obviously, when we talk about those three groups, they are very specific, but it doesn't mean that those are the only defenseless people. Sure. We brought up quite a bit about human trafficking in the world and uh, the need that people have to uh, to be adopted, to be fostered. And so all of those things kind of fall under this umbrella of the widows, the orphans, and the poor, but really, in a more general sense, those that are considered defenseless. And when we think about social justice in a biblical sense, the wisdom of Scripture tells us that when we ask the question, well, who should I reach out to? Who should I fight for? Mm -hmm. Well, it's those groups. It's the defenseless. And when we think about, well, who are the defenseless? Well, that comes from understanding who they are. And when we see those that are treated um, against what God sees them as, as human beings, as precious to him, as fearfully and wonderfully made. And so we have to be able to filter the way we consider social justice underneath that biblical lens. And it starts with how they see Jesus through us. You know, if Jesus is not at the epicenter of those three things. We're really missing the mark when it comes to that kind of thing. That's right. Uh, one thing that really, point that I wanted to make that really struck me is knowing what true justice looks like. True justice would be um, for the wages of sin is death, right? And I am not a good person. I am not inherently uh, good and therefore deserving of heaven, deserving to be in the presence of God. Uh, but what makes me righteous is the act that Jesus did, the dying on the cross, the shedding of his blood, and then um, him dying and then being raised from the dead. And so that's what makes us righteous um, in, in that sense. And so when we talk about uh, social justice, like just what Patrick's saying, but just said just a slight bit different way is Jesus at, is at the epicenter of that. And everything we do, literally everything that we do revolves around uh, sharing the gospel, presenting the gospel, and knowing that true justice is um, not what Jesus went through. <laughs> Jesus, who was perfect, uh, had the, the the sin of the world laid upon him and died a horrific death. And so uh, that should be at the forefront of our minds when we're helping people. We know that we're doing it for Jesus' sake. We're doing it for the sake that they can know that truth, uh, the truth, the way that I want to encourage are. you to uh, just get involved uh, locally. And uh, there are also some organizations that you can get involved in internationally. One of those is Voice of the Martyrs. Um, another local one here is called The Call. Uh, that has to deal with um, foster children and uh, fostering uh, those those children there. Uh, International Justice Mission, the National Right to Life, Operation Underground Railroad, and then of course, uh, local PD, uh, support them. We have several officers here at Christ Church, and so we wanna support them. They are literally on the front lines uh, seeing some of the worst uh, of humanity, and so we wanna support them. Um, so yes, lots of difficult things um, and lots of opinions that we can have on that, 
But I think uh, Patch said it the best when it's just keeping Jesus in the forefront of that. How do we act like Jesus? How do we treat people like Jesus? And how do we reflect the character of God? So thank you very much. Hope uh, this helps you launch your small group and or you as an individual uh, kind of dig deeper into God's word. And I wanted to mention too, I'm going to put all the uh, verses, uh, reference verses in the description below. And so you'll have those. All right. Yeah. In the, yeah. Down here. All right. Thank you very much.